podcast party. Descent into a verse. My name is Renaissance. We've reached Fort Knucklebone, where a hag named Mad Maggie offered to restore Lulu's memories. The only catch is that she wanted us to give her the souls of four victims. Instead, we've decided to kill her, rescue her mechanic, and steal one of her infernal war machines. Go ahead, Ren, make your surprise attack on Mad Maggie with, I believe, a guiding bolt, right? Yes, that is gonna be a 19 with a guiding bolt. Absolutely will hit, roll your damage. 22 radiant. Whoa! Ouch! Nice. Yeah, this brilliant ball of energy goes sailing through the air, maybe 20 feet. Mad Maggie lifts her head too late as she's sort of counting the four coins that she has ready to utilize for this ritual, and too late sees this radiant sphere hit her straight in the chest, and she screams, Aah! Aah! and her eyes glow with malice. Let's roll initiative. Good oh boy. We're at disadvantage, right? Everyone except Ophelia, because Ophelia's not exhausted. Now, however, Hylan and Corbin, since you are within 10 feet of Renaissance, while you do have disadvantage, you do have a plus three to whatever you get. Fantastic. And Renaissance, you have a blessing, so you have advantage, which I think- So I have have a normal initiative roll. Right. With disadvantage, I still got a 20. Very nice. So that's a 23. I rolled a natural 20, but with disadvantage, I get an eight. Uh Oh. Renaissance got a natural 20 for a total of 23. Yes, this is an auspicious beginning. And Ophelia rolled a 17. All right. A heads up on uh, Mad Maggie, because she got hit with that guiding bolt, the next attack against her has advantage. All right, yes. Nice. Wizen sees everything going on and has wisely decided to stay the hell out of this combat. He's going to stay underneath the giant machine. Thanks, Wizen. Should have taken his soul. (laughs) Lulu will unfortunately get a four. That's all right. Highland and Renaissance, you guys are tied at 23. You guys get to decide who goes first. I'll set him up for you, Highland. Renaissance is going to charge forward at Maggie. Uh, He'll get right up in front of her, and he's going to take a swing with Heaven's Fall with advantage because of the guiding bolt. All right. Ooh, still only a 12. 12 will miss, unfortunately. She sees you coming, and her sort of tongue lolls out of her mouth, and she's like, oh yeah, I love it, suffering. Give me some of that. Oh, you missed, what the hell? Okay, I'll try try to backswing for one more attack with Heaven's Fall, this one not with advantage. This time I got a 20, dirty 20. All right, that hits, go and roll your damage. It's uh, six magical bludgeoning and one radiant, but I am going to dump a level two divine smite on her. Yes. Smite that hag. 2d8, she is a fiend, is that correct? She is indeed. So that's going to be 3d8, and then because it's a level 2 spell, it's going to be a total of 4d8 radiant. Nice. Oh, Jesus. Okay, Whoa. well, six. It's a terrible roll for me. Uh, so she takes six radiant, uh, so that is a total of 12 points oh of damage. Oh my god, three nat ones. Your, wow. uh, your mace comes in for the backswing. It starts to sort of glow, and you just put everything you have into this smite. And she, in slow mo, sort of like looks at the mace and sort of smiles almost as this thing comes in for her, her face. And as you hit it, her head just sort of like clunk and it hits it like maybe three inches to the left. And she just sort of like slowly moves her face back in your direction. He goes, Oh, come on, sweetheart. That's all? Careful what you wish for, darling. That is the end of my turn. Highland. I have a few questions. This person directly to my northwest. It's Chucka or Clonk? Chucka. Okay. He has a, a big a big sort of spear looking thing, like almost like a lance. Since I heedlessly ran away from him, did he take a swing at me? He did not. Okay. Great. These two small creatures to the right of the vehicle in the little alley there. What are those? You got sort of a a very brief look at them. You saw little red hats peeking out over their heads, but they didn't look like any red caps you have yet seen. Those are called like mad caps. It looks like something that Mario jumps on. Yeah. 
I'm totally crazy. Okay. <laughs> Oof. Okay. I'm going to move five feet to my north so that I am between Chukka and Corbin. And then I'm going to throw two psychic blades at Mad Maggie. Well, that sucks. The first one is an 11 to hit. That will miss, unfortunately. The second one is an 18. That will hit. Great. I get sneak attack on that. So that is five psychic and seven sneak attack for a total of 12. And I will stay where I am. Yeah, the psychic blade whistles through the air and hits her in the chest. She looks down at it and goes, ah, that kind of hurt. Not bad. Ophelia. Ophelia casts Crown of Madness, or attempts to, on the Flesh Golem. It's going to need a DC 15 wisdom save. That's a 17 wisdom save. As a bonus action, I will cast Bardic Inspiration on Renaissance. Nice. All right. It's now uh, the Red Caps. Now, if you guys don't remember, there were a lot of these things when you came into... Oh, I remember clearly. Yeah. The only one that's actually sort of aware of what the hell is going on right now, red cap wise, is a red cap about 20 feet behind Ophelia. Ophelia, you sort of have this glance over at the red cap who has these enormous iron boots. And it's a very strange thing because the boots are about, I don't know, half the size of the entire creature. But you are amazed to see how swiftly this thing turns and screams out to his compatriots behind you. Uh, We have a problem here. Come, everyone, go get them. And he runs about 40 feet in the direction of about six red caps behind you. Should have killed that little fucker. I know. Should have killed him. From behind you, I think you guys probably hear the din of multiple red caps all speaking in the same amazing French accent. Oh, yes. Let's go get them. Yes, we are indebted to Maggie. Yes, we go get them. I will kick them in the face, and then I will tell them the password. No, you do not tell them the password. There is no password. Shut up. (laughs) With that, other red caps move very swiftly. These six red caps, having been spurred on by their brethren, decide to run in towards you. So there are now seven red caps in your general vicinity. As they approach Lulu, Lulu turns and she's like, this isn't good, this isn't good at all. And the red caps all sort of stop and look at Lulu and they all snigger at each other and go, (laughs) oh, Ah, oh, yes, a, a celestial. We like celestials. Get her! And they all sort of reach out their grubby little claws to try to <gasps> grab at Lulu. No fucking way. Nope. Because they dashed, they don't have an action, but they definitely look like they're gonna do that. That's their turn. It's now Mad Maggie's turn. Mad Maggie's taking a couple hits. She's not looking fantastic, but she's not looking really pissed off or hurt that much, to be honest. And she sort of looks back behind her and says, Oh, suffering. Yes, I like suffering. But I like it better when it's other people. Mickey, show them what's up. And then she she sort of shimmers for a second and completely disappears. It is now the Madcap's turn. They run directly for their closest target. They clamber up over the scavenger, which is this enormous vehicle, and run straight at Corbin. And Corbin, they jump through the air and attempt to drop kick you in the face with these enormous iron boots. Wow, strike first, strike hard, no mercy. They can move their speed directly at Corbin and do their special move, which is called Iron Bound Pursuit. Please make a dexterity saving throw. I have faith in you, Corbin. Three. I shouldn't have. Crit fail. (laughs) Oh, no. You jinxed me. The second one also does it as well, so make another one, please. Uh, I can't do worse. Look at it. (laughs) That's true. Ooh. Dirty 20. Okay, so the second one misses you, probably because you've already been knocked prone by the first one. <laughs> it lands on the sort of the side. It just looks over at the first one who hit you and just goes. <laughs> but the first one does in fact hit you and does a lot of bludgeoning damage. That is 21 bludgeoning damage. Ooh. Oh, ouch. Ooh. Ow. But surely the Simpson children will be saved. <laughs> <laughs> 
And you're knocked prone, unfortunately. Uh, ow. That's the Madcap's turn. Corbin, ow. you're prone on the ground. It's your turn. Ow. I'll stand up, and Corbin is going to say, Lulu, get in the cave. And he's going to walk forward five feet, and he's going to say, Ilmata. And he's going to hold up his shield and display his symbol of his god and say, protect us. And a sliver of orange light is going to appear, and then in one whoosh, we're all going to be surrounded by twilight. Yay. Going to use his channel divinity. Yes. Twilight Sanctuary. Is Corbin standing on the hood of the vehicle? Yeah, can I stand? I, I want to stand up, which is half my movement, and then move five feet up onto the vehicle. That's that's fine. That's Captain fine. Captain Morganing it on the... Yeah, uh, totally. Okay. I want to be... I was thinking more like Titanic, but... Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but whatever. Did Maggie vanish like she went invisible? I will allow you to make an Arcana check. 13? You don't think it was invisibility. I'm pretty sure she's invisible. <laughs> I think it's invisible. It's invisible. <laughs> I don't know. My spoon will soon sort this out. Uh, I mean... <laughs> and then I'm going to use my bonus action to cast a spell. A sliver of light is going to appear by whatever that thing is in the back there. Mickey. And from that sliver of light, a pillow is going to appear. <laughs> I'm going to womp him with spiritual weapon. An 11? An 11 will miss. Rolling not crap today. But I will take my temporary hit point. 11. You want me to roll for everybody, or do you just want to keep that? 11? That's up to them. I don't care what you want to do as long as it keeps going uh, in the same to way. keep things moving, I'm happy to just say whatever the roll is for that round, that's what it is. Okay, so everybody at the end of their turn will get 11 temporary hit points. Okay, and then you'll re-roll at the beginning of the next round? Yep. Yeah, that makes sense. It's now Mickey's turn. Mickey sort of lumbers forward and sort of moans. And makes this sort of strange limping hop towards you and walks straight through the space that Maggie was. Yeah, I was wondering about that. And takes his enormous, like three, maybe, I don't know, three and a half foot wide claw and slams it in your direction, Renaissance. Son of a bitch. He's going to do it twice. That's a 24 to hit. That will hit. Uh, that is 20 bludgeoning damage. Mm. Ouch. Fortunately for Renaissance, he was carrying a ton of temps. They are all gone. It just smacks him across the face. He's bleeding a little bit from the nose, but his temps actually ate most of that. Great. I only actually took three real hit points of damage on that shot. Great. Nice. Okay, now number two. Uh, that is a 22 to hit. That will hit as well. Holy shit, 30 what? bludgeoning Fuck. damage. You guys. Oh, okay, that's, this yeah. This is really bad. I'm staggered. It's hard. Uh, I'm fucked up, but I'm still up. That is, that is Mickey's turn. It is now Chucka's turn. Chucka has sort of seen all this. Chucka takes out his pike and will stab it at the closest creature to him, who is Tylen. Uh, that's a 21 to hit. Yeah, that'll hit. I'm gonna uncanny dodge it. Okay, it's nine piercing damage. So you only take four. Great. It's Lulu's turn. Lulu sees this army of red caps coming in her direction, and she's just like, because she heard you say, fly into the cave. You see that they're carrying these, like, comically huge sickles. Lulu will just follow the directions that you gave her, Corbin, and fly further in. The ceiling is 20 feet high, so she will fly as far as she can without being whacked. So she'll fly up to the top of the ceiling and sort of avoid the madcaps and fly all the way to the back of the cave. At which point, Clonk sort of looks up at her and goes, Lulu, in the same voice as Mad Maggie. Come on down. And now it's Clonk's turn. Clonk is wielding this rather enormous, as befits his name, hammer glowing red from the inside almost like it's made out of some kind of infernal iron. He, he ignores Lulu. He, he knows he can't get to her. So he will just move around the scavenger. He will move towards you, Corbin, and hit you in the face, if he can, with this hammer. Don't do it, bud. Don't do it. He gives a very bad rendition of Corbin and says, Don't do it, bud. Don't do it. And then he says, Do it. And then he tries to hit you in the face. That's a 15 to hit. Bounces right off my shield. Didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> Renaissance, it's your turn. Okay, god damn it. Oh, gang. 
This is. <laughs> I know oh it's bad. Can you yeah. banish it or something? Uh, I gotta take this thing out, I guess. I spit a tooth <laughs> onto the onto the cave floor, and I'm gonna take two swings at the flesh golem with Heaven's Fall. First hit is a 14. A 14 will hit. Oh, thank God. Oh, point of order. You mentioned it was fiendish. Is that is it a fiend? No, it seems to be made out of pieces of fiends. So it is not itself a fiend. Okay. In that case, it takes seven magical bludgeoning off of this hit. I'm going to bonus action. <laughs> ah, stress. The struggle out. is real. The struggle is yeah. real. I'm going to bonus action Searing Smite. So Renaissance, he runs his hand along the haft of Heaven's Fall, and Heaven's Fall bursts into flames. I'm going to take a second swing. Uh, that is a 19. It will hit. He's going to take six more magical bludgeoning off of the mace, and he's going to eat a Searing Smite for. 10 fire damage, and he is on fire. Great. And I'm going to dump a Divine Smite on top of that. As your Searing Smite goes through, you notice that the fire damage that would normally be just burning with intense heat doesn't seem to have as much power to it against this creature. So you only, unfortunately, do five fire damage. Got it. I am going to dump a level one Smite on him. So he's going to take 2d8 Radiant on top of everything. Two, eight. 14 Radiant. The total of all of that shit was 32 points of damage total. Nice. He's much bigger than me. So I kind of get up under his thigh and it's just like an upward smash with Heaven's Fall. And then I bring it down into his midsection with the second strike. And then the smite explodes out of his abdomen. And that's where the Radiant Blast hits him. Awesome. I will pass go and collect my 11 temporary hit points from Corbin. Thank you, Corbin. <laughs> he grunts in what you can only assume to be some kind of discomfort. And I, I understand that he is resistant to fire, but he is still on fire. That's correct. He is on fire. Okay, that's it for me. Hylan, you're up. Hylan is going to see all of these creatures around her, figure that her best bet for helping everyone is to stay alive. And she is going to bamp out her wings and her eyes will glow blue. She's going to walk 10 feet with her dragon wings out and then fly up 20 more feet. And I'll take the attack of opportunity from Chucka and then I'm going to fly up and that's my turn. He will swing at you with his pike. That's a 14 to hit. That will miss. Whoosh, through the air. Ophelia, it's your turn. Ophelia will run to just in front of the closest two red caps and she will cast Thunderclap. They need to succeed on a DC 15 con save or be clapped by thunder. Yeah, they did not get your DC at all. Nice. In that case, that's going to be eight thunder damage for each of them. And of course, this enormous boom of thunder just emanating from your position within, I think, 100 feet? It is 100 feet, yes. It looks like you just rang the dinner bell. Okay. The red caps hold their little ears, which are sort of poking out from under their little caps, and just scream obscenities. The red caps are going to just surround you. There are four of them that are close to you. So one will move to one corner, one will move to another corner, a third will move to the third corner, and a fourth will move to the fourth corner. They're just surrounding you, Ophelia. All four will make attacks with their sickles. And they're all flanking, little pricks. I know. Which means that they have advantage. I have some unfortunate news, because each red cap, as swift as they may seem to be on their feet, are even more swift with their hands. They heft this enormous sickle, which, as I said, is like probably not twice their size, but at least 1.5 times it. And they make three attacks apiece with their sickles. So that is a total of 12 attacks on you. Wow. Yeah, that's bad. That's bad. That's not good. Tell me what your AC is and I'll tell you how many hits they get. How about that? Sounds good. Uh, my AC is 16. Good news, no crits. That is good. some good news. Bad news. One, two, eight hits. Jesus. Eight out of 12. I'm just going to remind everyone I have uh. several healing potions on my person. Just, you know, so everyone remembers mm-hmm. that. Let me do a quick total. Shit, that's never a good sign. You ran into the middle of them. <laughs> yeah. I have 15 temp hit points right now. That's 67. Oof. 
Boom, Ophelia, you're just surrounded by whirling steel, and these creatures are all screaming at you. Holy shit. Their eyes just brimful of fury and bloodlust, and Ophelia falls to the ground. The other four red caps will use their move and their action to move towards Corbin. So now, Corbin, you are surrounded by red caps, and that's their turn. It's now the Madcaps' turn. The Madcaps are giggling with glee, seeing you completely surrounded, folks, by enemies on all sides. And even more so after Ophelia falls to the ground, the Red Caps screaming in absolute intense joy after dropping Ophelia to the ground. The Madcaps then will attack you, Corbin. They as well have these crazy looking sickles. Six attacks. What's your AC? 18. Again, good news, no crits. Bad news, three hits. So that is a total of 29 damage. My temps eat some of that, but I eat some of it too. Oh dear, what are you down to? 22. Okay, Corbin, your turn. Ow, Ophelia's down. I don't think I can help her yet. As you say that, you hear a voice come from the back. It's faint, but you recognize it as Lulu's. And she says, Don't worry, I got her! All right, your motto, kill these foul creatures. And Corbin is going to cast Spirit Guardians. Nice. As all these little hand-like butterflies come flying out around him, and he is going to hit everything. The crows, the madcaps. That is great. Everybody, and he's casting it at fourth level. Oh! That's a lot. That's a lot. Yes. Ammo. So Spirit Guardians is a 15-foot radius. Oh, good. That gets one of the ones on Ophelia. How about Wizen? He's underneath the... No, no, no. I won't hit him. Okay. This is nice, though, Corbin. And I tell them, run these things. We'll kill you all. Hoping they'll listen. And if yes, Maggie's indeed. in it right now, she's getting hit. The pillow's going to take a swipe at what's-his-face... A 26. Yeah. All right. And that hits, I assume? Yeah, it does. Seven points of force damage. And my Twilight Sanctuary gives eight temporary hit points this round, which is the minimum, by the way. Mm. Of course it is. Does it give to people who are unconscious as well? No, you have to have at least one real hit point to get a temporary hit point. Yeah. Is Mickey's turn? It is, unless Corbin has anything else that he wants to do. That's it, man. At the start of Mickey's turn, Mickey does have to make a con save. Alrighty. Gonna be DC 14. Yeah, he got a 19. Mickey is no longer on fire. And he's not in my spirit guardian? He's just outside of it. But so many other things are, it's great. Which is why I said get in the cave. He's just gonna, unfortunately, do what he does, which is two attacks on you, Renaissance. 26? Shit. My toes are curling. That one wasn't so bad, actually. Really, really poor damage rolls. That's only nine bludgeoning. Oh, okay, my temps actually eat that, so that does not wound me. Yes. Fantastic. Nice. Second attack. 19 to hit. I block that with gargs. Woo! Nice. As you block it with gargs, you hear in your mind, Any moment now, Renaissance. <laughs> <laughs> Just let me do what I love. Renaissance. <laughs> Too many of my friends in the way, Gox. But it has crossed my mind. Oh, well, that's a step in the right direction then, I guess. <laughs> All you have to do is turn around. Let me just, please, just. <laughs> You're trying to get me to kill Corbin, Gogs. Just let me handle this. Let me drive, Gogs. Oh, really? Am I, though? I've got it under control. I'll call oh. you if I need you. <laughs> kind of busy. <laughs> Click. Chucka will start his turn in the Spirit Guardians. You deserve it, Chucka. And Chucka will take, well, depending on his wisdom saving throw, he rolled a 19, actually. The Garg's conversation reminds me of the Saul Rubinek scene in True Romance when he's driving his convertible. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Don't give me the finger, I'll fucking have you killed! Yes! <laughs> so that's a 19 on the wisdom save for Chucka. So he takes 12. Chucka is absolutely freaking out. The feathers are coming out of him. Don't like, don't like it, don't like it. And he runs out of the spirit guardians. He has half movement. Yeah, once he's out of it, he takes another 10 out. And he just, he looks like he's running for the gate. Sayonara. One down. That's Chucka's turn. 
It is now Lulu's turn. Lulu will fly. She flies. Foo, 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 foo. Lands next to you, Ophelia, and casts Cure Wounds at first level. You feel the life that was so horrifically taken from you surging back into you once again. Jesus. She will give you back six points of healing. You're at six. Okay. She's emboldened. She sees Chucka about to run for the gate and maybe sound the alarm because there, there's this giant gong on the top of the gates. You don't know what the hell that's for, but Chucka looks like he's he's aiming for it. So Lulu just, she will take the opportunity attacks from these red caps because it's only one apiece. And she will run for Chucka, her tusks just aiming right for Chucka's back. Aww. The red caps will take two attacks on Lulu. Oof, man. Only one hits Lulu doing eight points of damage. Okay. She had 11 temps. No damage on her whatsoever. You do not see her glistening golden blood at all. She saved Ophelia, that's the important thing. On Lulu, since she's within 30 feet of me, she gets eight temporary. Thank you, sir. Wisdom save, please. That's a three. He takes 24 points of just getting the shit kicked out of him by ill mater hands. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, Ilmater does not like this individual as Ilmater's uh, floating hands of retribution beat Clunk into a bloody pulp and Clunk falls to the ground and does not move. And that's it for Clunk. Renaissance, it is now your turn. I bang Heaven's Fall against my breastplate and I say Ignis Avernum and Heaven's Fall glows like bright white, like it's just been taken out of a forge. I'm gonna cast Branding Smite as a bonus action, and I will take two swings at the golem. Okay, first swing is a 14. 14 will hit. Great. That is going to be eight magical bludgeoning for starters. He takes nine radiant from the Branding Smite. He cannot become invisible, not that he was planning to. Um, he's glowing and shedding light in a five foot radius around himself. <laughs> Amazing. And I will dump a level two divine smite on him. Nice. So he is also going to take an additional 14 radiant. All right. Now I'm, I'm attacking him again. Wow. 15. 15 will hit. Yes. So far you've done upwards of s about 70 damage on this guy. Wow. Yeah. I might have, a, I got a spell slot problem, fam. Okay. Uh, okay, I've got two more level two spell slots. I'm gonna burn a, another level two spell slot and I'm gonna divine smite him again. But first of all, he takes 10. Let's see if that kills him. Not even close, my friend. Although the hits you are doing on him are certainly enough to, to fell any mortal man, this creature is enormous. So here I come with another 3d8 radiant on him after the 10. That's another 15. Ugh. That's my turn. Something very, very important happens. Hi, everybody. The show will be back shortly for the second half. Hey, have you ever wanted to open up a can of whoop ass on a hag and an army of red caps like our heroes unwisely did in this episode? Well, our professional dungeon masters are available to hire for online games. We have games for kids as well as adults, and our DMs can run almost any of the official Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition adventures, as well as third party adventures, and some we've actually created ourselves. Check us out at cast party.com and follow us on Facebook at Cast Party DD, on Twitter at Cast Party 2, or on Instagram at Cast underscore party, or on motherfucking TikTok. Yes, we're doing TikTok at Cast underscore party. I won't even let my kid have TikTok. Oh well. As always, we're offering monthly free online adventures with our Dungeon Masters. These free games fill up quickly, so if you'd like to grab a spot, you should join our email list or our Discord server. Links to both can be found at cast-party.com. If you enjoy Podcast Party, please follow the show, rate us, and leave us a review. We'd love to hear from you. Message us on social media or email us at info at cast-party.com. Follow us on Facebook at Cast Party d, d on Twitter at Cast Party 2, on Instagram at Cast underscore Party, or on motherfucking TikTok at Cast underscore Party. Unless you're my daughter, then you're not allowed to do that. Thanks very much for listening. And now back to our adventure in Avernus. <laughs> I'd like you all to make perception checks with advantage. And then get a 14. 
Is that a straight roll because we're exhausted? Oh, yeah, actually, yeah, yeah, it would be, yeah. Mm-hmm. Corbin got an 18. Ophelia got a 15. Renaissance got a 2. Everyone but Renaissance, I think probably it makes a lot of sense. One, because he's further into the cave and the rest of you are just about at the mouth of it or maybe just a little further in. You hear a noise coming from outside of Fort Knucklebone. The sound of something enormous rolling in the direction of Ford Knucklebone. It is then that you hear the screams of the red caps that are on top of the tower that you guys saw coming into Ford Knucklebone. And one of them grabs a sickle close by and hits the gong. Not a gong that symbolizes that there's danger from inside Fort Knucklebone, but danger from outside of it. He hits the gong once, twice, enormous, peeling throughout this entire space. You hear the excited screams and yells of perhaps dozens of red caps and mad caps that populate this fort. And that is when you hear a screech and grinding of metal and an enormous crash. The gate to Fort Knucklebone is summarily just rolled over. And there is something similar to the scavenger, but much bigger. It's about 20 feet on a side. It's about 20 feet tall. It has enormous treads like a tank. So it's some kind of a vehicle, but there are no horses to drive it. You see that there are flames coming out of it in every direction, being spewed like a like some kind of an angry dragon, but it is certainly not alive. It is made out of rusted metal and bone and all kinds of horrendous objects that are stuck into the front of it. As this thing barrels through the front gate of Fort Knucklebone, you see that upon it are four creatures. These creatures seem to be human, but they are decorated in bones and skins and have wild hair. And as this thing piles into Fort Knucklebone and screeches to a stop, these four creatures disembark from it. This is so Mad Max, by the way. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, we love it. It runs into Fort Knucklebone with amazing speed, barreling into the front courtyard, 20 or so feet from your position, Ophelia, and Lulu just skids to a stop. Chucka is just absolutely appalled and screams in abject fear and horror as this thing just runs directly into him. Ooh. Chucka has to make a dexterity saving throw. And I don't think it's really gonna fucking matter, honestly. He made poor choices. Yeah, he rolled a natural one. The dice tell a story. Chucka is absolutely impaled by this thing as it comes to a stop not five feet from Lulu. Does he go around the tread like three times? Oh, oh. dude. What? Well, it's actually, Chucky doesn't go under the tread. He gets impaled by these sort of strange looking spikes that look almost like teeth, but they're constantly sort of moving up and down like in a sort of gnashing, grinding fashion. You also see that hanging off more than one side of this vehicle are two enormous looking crossbows or catapults, you're not quite sure. And they are manned by two of these individuals who jump off of the vehicle onto the the grounds of Fort Knucklebone. The fifth one stays on board. You hear screams of, you're not sure if it's a name or if it's a person or a thing, but all through the entirety of Fort Knucklebone, all the red caps are screaming, Raga Draga, Raga Draga. (laughs) I scream under the vehicle that's next to me. Yes. I kind of squat down. Can I see Wizen like cowering under it? Yeah, absolutely. And I say to him, is this thing running? I point to the vehicle. Wizen looks up at you and says, um, well, I mean, yeah, it just needs, you know, a little bit of a tinkering, maybe a soul coin or two. Yeah, why? You better start it up. From down here? We're leaving. Do whatever you need to do. Whip the horses or however it goes. We're going. You're coming. Make a persuasion check. That is a 11. Let me have Wizen do an insight check against that. You rolled an eight? Wizen's like, sure. 
and he starts to sort of slide out from underneath the scavenger vehicle. Hyland, it is your turn. I'm in the air, and I can see this vehicle and the creatures that get out of it. And I'm going to say to them, do we have a problem or are we all going to kill some red caps? I'll have you make an insight check for all four of these creatures in terms of where you think their loyalties lie and maybe what their goals are. Okay, I'm not great at this, guys. Ten. Unknown at this point. They definitely are aiming themselves in your direction, but who knows what that means. Okay, well, I don't have time for this, so I'm going to fly down just enough to get a line of sight on the golem, and I'm going to throw two psychic blades at it. Yeah. First one is an 18. That'll hit. That's six psychic and 18 sneak attack for a total of 24 on the first hit. Awesome. Second hit is a 13. A 13 will hit. Great. That's seven psychic. Yeah, those big hits. Uh, it sort of like grunted and looked down where you threw your blade. And it's sort of like sort of a little weirded out by the fact that it can't see what you threw at him anymore. And then I'm going to fly back up. I think I just had to go down five feet to do that. So I'm going to fly some 30 feet in the air. Did you add your extra uh, radiant carry for being oh, in? Oh, good point. Because my wings are out. So I get uh, an additional seven radiant damage. So just add seven to that. Ophelia, you're alive. And surrounded. And surrounded with six, six hit points. I turn around and I, I scream, Ophelia, disengage, we are leaving. <laughs> <laughs> I will do so. Aww. Sorry, Gargoth speaks to you now. Oh, Rachel. To, to Ophelia. <laughs> Oh, you know you want to. Come on. Just... <laughs> okay, so I disengage and I move toward Renaissance's voice to the extent that I can hear him. Oh, boy. I am off to the side of the vehicle standing next to Renaissance. Then, yeah, that's what I do. Inspiration, inspiration. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, Corbin, Bardic Inspiration. Uh, red caps around Corbin. Wisdom saves 18, 17, and fail. The fail takes 24, the other guy takes, the other two take 12. And they're more than welcome to leave. They're gonna take some hits on you because they just love bloodlust and that's what they do. That's what these creatures are all about. So that's nine attacks, six with advantage. None of them were crits. My AC is 18. Let's see, one hit, two hits, three hits, four hits, five hits, six hits. Six hits out of nine. 33 plus is uh, 38, 46. Corbin is down and Spirit Guardians is down. Does your spiritual weapon drop as well? It actually doesn't weirdly because it doesn't require concentration. The pillow sort of looks in your direction like the carpet in Aladdin. My Twilight Sanctuary is gone then because I am incapacitated. This is terrible. This is terrible. In case the listener can't tell already, this is terrible. Maybe Lulu can... Lulu has her own problems. <laughs> I guess she she's, does. She's got these dudes in front of her and this giant flipping her infernal machine. Mm. It's okay. It's okay. That is the Red Cap's turn. It is now the Mad Cap's turn. Oh, God. The Mad Cap raises its sword to skewer Corbin. And as it does so, you hear a voice. And it says, Stop! I want him alive. Don't do it. The madcap turns, looks at a specific space where you now see coming out of the shadows, Mad Maggie, who is sort of almost sort of has like wisps of black smoke coming off of her as she rematerializes in that very space. The madcap turns to Mad Maggie and goes, blah, 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 blah. In a sort of evil stitch voice. <laughs> and then the madcap looks at the other madcap, sort of shrugs. They go, and then Mad Maggie points at the five intruders that have come into Fort Knucklebone, knocking down the gate. And she says, keep them alive. I want right to drag a gun. Get them out of here. And the madcaps turn towards these five and their machine. Corbin, you are, however, still dying. Please make a death saving throw. I'm really good at these. Uh, nine. That's a failure. 
You can use your bardic inspiration for this. I will use my... <sighs> well, if you use it, it's an automatic success because all you need is a 10. All right, I'm going to use it. Solid. That's one success. Take Thank your you, pain Corbin. and use it in your art. Yeah, <laughs> That's the it. rule. You really didn't want to use it. <laughs> it is now the flesh golem's turn. Mad Maggie turns and calls across to Mickey, who's about to just pound on Renaissance with two enormous fists. And Mad Maggie says, stop, Mickey. I won't rack a drag a gone. Do what you need to do. We'll take it up with them later. Go. And Mad Maggie's orders to Mickey seem to have some effect as Mickey walks right around you, stepping over the scavenger, just like with one enormous Riker-esque step. Renaissance, you're more than welcome to give it an opportunity attack if you'd like. No, I don't think I'm gonna. <laughs> do it, do it, do it, do it. Yeah, you want me to? Even Gargoth's like, come on, man. Do not gonna be our friend. It's not that close to death. <laughs> you're just gonna piss it off. You're not gonna kill it. Well, with Garg's asking me to, I definitely don't. <laughs> Fair enough. I'm so tempted to, to hit it. But... <laughs> oh, I know. The golem steps over the scavenger and sort of squeeges through. I used another word that I made up, folks. Woohoo! Yeah. Squidges! He squidges through the cave and it moves and then uses its action to move pretty much as, as far as it can, which is almost where Mad Maggie is and where the red caps are. It is now Lulu's turn. Lulu is like, oh no! Oh no! No! Please leave me alone! And Lulu will use her action to fly uh -huh. up in the air as far as she can, which is 120 feet. Oh, it's just a tiny speck. Yeah, Renaissance, it's your turn. Go ahead. Did Wizen just tell me that his vehicle runs on soul coins? Yeah. Sure did. So I'm assuming it's not moving without a soul coin. No plan, Ophelia. We don't want that car. I point to Wizen's car. We want that car. I point to Ragadraga's <laughs> car. <laughs> nice. <laughs> okay. Thanks very much for listening. This episode featured the Dungeon Master stylings of the one and only Matt Gordon, with Tali Viezer as Renaissance, Carolyn Fox as Highland, Rachel Tamron as Ophelia, and me, Andy Canistra, as Painbearer Corbin Shiv. This episode was edited by Carolyn Fox and Tal Aviazer. Our original theme music is by Lauren Anker and Anthony DeMasso. Remember, if you enjoy Podcast Party, please follow the show, rate us, and leave us a review. Thanks very much for listening. We'll be back in two weeks with the next episode. Oh, Mickey, you're so fine. You got someone else's spine. Hey, Mickey. <laughs> We're going to blow his mind. I was going to do it, but I thought Tall would get mad, so I didn't do it. Oh, we'll just edit it off. <laughs> we'll just edit it. <laughs> you didn't like you got someone else's spine? No, I, no, that's, that's perfect. <laughs> 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 <laughs>